Praise God. Well, today, the title of the message is Turn Up the Volume. I know, it's a different title, right? <laughs> okay. I trust that everyone will leave here today with a different or a heightened perspective on the subject matter presented. The purpose of this message is to put into remembrance for some and introduce others to the potential that lies within us. For those of us who've been privileged to attend Sunday worship service and Thursday night Bible study, we have been blessed by the excellent teaching of Pastor Kevin Adams. He is making it crystal clear regarding the components of the kingdom of God. And he's also teaching us how to develop as believers so that we can gain understanding and become mature disciples of Christ. What we will learn today is designed to assist us along our journey. Turn with me to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse. Now, I will say this to you. I only have 53 minutes left or something like that. So the point is, I'm going to be rifling through these scriptures rather quickly. Now, I know all of you are astute, you're good, you're going to go right along with me, but I'm giving you fair warning, take notes. Just jot down notes because I want to make sure I get everything in because I believe it's really worth it. So it's not like I'm trying to stand up here and, oh, let's just see how quick she can just go through things. I'm just letting you know it's the confines of time. The clock is not my friend. But if you write down the notes, I promise you, you'll be able to go back and it will all make sense. Fair enough? Now, also, just so that you know, everything that I read with the exception of two scriptures, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. It does not matter what translation you have. I promise we'll end up in the same space. Okay? So if we're looking at Jeremiah 29, we're going to look at the 11th verse, and it says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Now, many of you already are aware of this scripture. It establishes that God has a plan for each of us. Additionally, it informs us that it is a plan for our welfare and peace to give us hope in our final outcome. The dictionary definition of welfare, however, is the good fortune, health, happiness, prosperity, well-being. So if we reread that verse of scripture, it could say, or should say, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for good fortune, health, happiness, prosperity, well-being, and peace, and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. So I'm going to, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. I don't want you to do that. But I do want you to be your authentic selves. Authentic meaning, not the person you dress up really nice and you're sitting here, you look beautiful. The real person who got up this morning, you know, as they headed to the, the, the restroom for the first time. Your real self, the one that you and the Lord see, okay? <laughs> In doing that, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you always feel that God's plan includes good fortune, health, happiness, prosperity, well-being, and peace for you. Okay? Some of you may even be honest enough to ask, why are you even here? What is your purpose? Are you accomplishing what you were born to do? Now, granted, there are some of you who knew at an early age what God in intended for your life. And that is indeed a blessing, and you should treasure that. However, for those of us that didn't know right away, and for those of us who are trying to the best of our ability to be all that God wants us to be, I would like to share how to turn up the volume so that you can receive clarity. If I were to say to you that you were about to take an important test, real serious test, and a written serious test. 
and I was going to give you the answer key, legitimately, not sneak it to you, but actually give you the answer key while you were taking the test. Would you like that? I mean, makes sense to me, right? Get all the right answers, okay? Or if I were to find out that you wanted to start up a computer company, I mean, you might want to, okay? You want to start up a computer company, and I said to you that you could have unlimited time with Bill Gates of Microsoft as your tutor. Would you like that idea? Okay. If you were embarking upon a career in basketball, and obviously had some athletic ability, okay? And I said that you could have unlimited lessons with Michael Jordan, and we'd make somebody like Phil Jackson your coach. Would that sound like a good idea? Okay, turn with me to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 16th verse. 1 Corinthians 3, and we're going to look at verse 16, and it says, Do you not discern and understand that the whole church at Corinth are God's temple, his sanctuary, and that God's spirit has his permanent dwelling in you, to be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually. With that being said, as believers, we have been born of the spirit of the most high God. He dwells within us. Now that's far better than just having somebody as a tutor. We've got the most high God living on the inside of us when we are born again. Turn with me to John's gospel, and we're gonna look at John 7. Let's go to the seventh chapter. Now keep in mind that these verses really apply to those of us who were born again. So we're gonna look at John 7, we're gonna look at verses 38 and 39, and we're gonna start with 38, Jesus is speaking here, and he says, he who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the spirit whom those who believed, trusted, had faith in him were afterward to receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified or raised to honor. Let's, while you're in John, let's go to the 14th chapter. And we're going to look at verses 16 and 17. And Jesus is speaking to us again. And he says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. Now, think about that. I'm going to read that part again. He's going to give us another comforter, and that comforter is our counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you, as a believer, I'm adding as a believer, okay, you as a believer, you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Now, while you're in John, let's go to the 16th chapter. And we're going to look, the 16th chapter, let's look at verse 7. Now, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He's telling them that he is getting ready to leave. So you can imagine how they must feel. They have walked with him. Now he's telling them that he is about to leave. I'm sure that they were kind of sad. I mean, that's minimum. Okay, so verse 7 it says, however, this is Jesus speaking, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, remember, the counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Now, while you're in that same chapter, drop down to verse 13. And it says, but when he, the the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears 
from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Verse 14, he will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive, draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Verse 15, everything that the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, tr transmit it to you. This is Jesus clearly letting us know more about the office of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know, a lot of times we always talk about God the Father. And that's wonderful, obviously, he's God. We talk about Jesus, our Lord and our personal Savior. And we kind of leave the Holy Spirit, you know, we know he's there, but I don't think we talk about him that much. I don't think we really delve into what he's been placed in our lives to do. And that's what I want you to think about today. I want you to just hang in there with me because I really want you to get this because I promise you it's gonna make a tremendous difference, okay? Now, as I said, all of those scriptures that we just read, that's letting us know the role of the Holy Spirit and that it's yet another gift that God has provided for us. Don't you think that God knew that this journey of life would be challenging for us? He loved us so much that he gave us the greatest gift of all in Jesus. He allowed us to be reconciled to himself by accepting Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. He deposited his spirit within us when we were born again, never to leave, never to, to, to dwell in us, never to leave, constantly to be there. But he loved us so much more that he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to overflowing evidence by speaking with other tongues. All we have to do is ask. It's very simple. The same way that you prayed Romans 10, 9 and 10 to become born again and to be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light, all you have to do is ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And jot this down. Luke's gospel, the 11th chapter, verses 9 through 13. I'm not going to go into reading it now, but you should read it if you're not familiar with it. It proves in that scripture all you literally have to do is ask. Okay? Now, turn with me to Acts, the first chapter, and the eighth verse. And many of you are familiar with this, but I'm going to go over it anyway. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. Now, in that particular verse of scripture, no matter the translation, when it uses the word power, it's using the Greek word dunamis. Now, for those of you who are taking notes, Dunamis is spelled D-U-N-A-M-I-S. And dunamis means, the Greek translation, strength, power, or ability. It is the root word of some of our English words, dynamite, dynamo, dynamic. So in other words, in this particular text, dunamis means the power of God. Now, if you had the choice of traveling along life in your own strength and limited wisdom, or the dunamis power of the Most High God with access to his infinite wisdom, which would you choose? Okay, obviously you choose the latter, okay? So turn with me to 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at the 14th chapter. And we're going to look at verse 2. And it says... For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit, he utters secret things and hidden things, not obvious to the understanding. Drop down to verse four. 
He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself, but he who prophesies interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. What I want you to pay attention to is the first part of that verse. When you are speaking with other tongues, it does a lot in so many different areas. But one of the things that sometimes I think, again, because we don't really talk about it, which is why we're doing it today, is that when you speak with other tongues, if I were to say to you, um, I wanted to <laughs> get a six pack, don't laugh. But <laughs> if I were to say that to you, I'm sure you would tell me, okay, well you obviously have to hit the gym, you gotta do something, okay? You're not gonna just sit there and just wish a six pack, it's not gonna come by faith, okay? I gotta do some work for that. But I can physically work the body for that. If I were to say that I wanted to, like I wanna learn Spanish in 2015, said it now, I really have to do it. But anyway, there's, that's academia, which means I'm gonna have to take some courses, get some books, I'm really gonna have to work on that. But I can increase my, my academia that way. Okay, well we're a tripart being, so what do we do about our spirit man? How do we increase that? Okay, yes, praying and in our understanding and reading the word, all of those are good things that builds our faith. But what builds our spirit man? Praying with other tongues. And I submit to you, this is exactly why the enemy does not want the body of Christ to receive this second gift that's available to them. He, you know, it gets him, he's not excited when people are born again. I mean, let's face it, because, you know, now he can't do anything, really. You know, he, he can't steal your life. And he doesn't like that. But for you to get to a point where you have your prayer language, where you can start praying and he doesn't know what you're talking about, because that's the other thing. When you pray in your understanding, he and all of his little demons, they know exactly what you're praying for. But when you're praying with other tongues, he has no idea what you're praying. There is nothing that he can do. But you are also building up that spirit, man. That is why he doesn't want that to happen. But that is why we're having this lesson today. Praise God. Now, while we are in Corinthians 14, let's, oh yeah, it's right here. <laughs> let's read the 14th verse. Jump down to the 14th verse and it says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me Praise, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and it really helps nobody. In other words, you don't know what you're praying. But you know what? You don't need to know because here's the thing when your spirit man is praying, it is God praying through you. Because remember, we already read, the Holy Spirit is only going to pray what he hears from the throne room. He's not even going to pray what he thinks. He's going to pray what's in the throne room. We already know that Jesus is our intercessor, our high priest. So he is going to pray what he has heard through us on our behalf. Again, that's why the enemy doesn't want you to do that. But he loses in the end. Um, now, here's something. Okay, I'm going to try to get this through. <laughs> this is 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 16. And I'm reading it because it deals with spiritual wisdom, and I think that it's worth it. So just bear with me while I try to get this in. Starting with verse 6. Yet, when we are among full-grown, spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do, we do impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. We are living that right now, okay? Verse seven, but rather when we are setting, what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God. That wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. 
none of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. Yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives, knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts, except the man's own spirit within him? Just so no one discerns, comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God, given to us, that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. And we are setting these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless, nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. But the spiritual man tries all things. He examines, investigates, inquire, inquires into, questions, and discerns all things. Yet is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything, but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels and purposes of the Lord as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, feelings and purposes of his heart. Now what I need you to do is let's look at Romans, excuse me, <laughs> the eighth chapter. And we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. And it says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are what? They're sons of God. For the spirit which we have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father. While you're there, look at verse 26. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray, to offer or how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Now, do you ever remember a time in your life when you were faced with a challenge that you knew only God could deliver you from? A time when you weren't even sure what to pray. <laughs> I submit to you, that's the perfect time to pray with other tongues. It's often referred to as perfect prayer. Because the Holy Spirit is praying through you on your behalf. Something that we were taught by Pastor Price Jr., and I love this, is that when we are praying with other tongues, present tense right now, when we're praying with other tongues, we are praying about our future, which is something when you think about it. 
regarding something that has been ordained before the foundation of the earth or the past. I'll repeat that. When we are praying with other tongues presently right now, we are praying about our future regarding something that has been ordained before the foundations of the earth in our past. That is something you can't tell me of any other language anywhere that can do that because any other language is not established by the Most High God. So that's something else we need to think about. And again, why do you think they don't talk about this in churches? Why do you think it's always put on the back burner? Because the enemy does not want you to know. Because he doesn't want to turn up the volume in your life. He wants you to just kind of go along, and think everything is just fine, and you come to church and you praise the Lord. Meanwhile, you're getting beat upside your head and you can't figure out why you're doing everything you know to do, but you're not using this tool that's already been given to you. You need to turn up the volume on every single situation in your life and see the changes. Uh, turn with me to the first, well, it's the only <laughs> epistle of Jude. And we're going to look at verses 20 and 21. And Jude is all the way in the back if you actually still have a real Bible. <laughs> um, and verse 20 says, but you, beloved, build yourselves up founded on your most holy faith. Make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. Guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you unto life eternal. I submit to you that the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues is what we need to turn up the volume in our journey. For instance, if you ask me how to expound upon what I just said, you really can't hear what I'm saying, right? Okay, it's much better when you can hear me clearly. Okay, so when you are praying and you are truly believing God for something, I I'm being your authentic selves now, being serious, and you just can't quite figure out, why am I not getting what he wants me to do? Why, you know, I know that he's called me to start a business. I know that. But how come I don't know who I'm supposed to contact? Or better yet, suppose you have a dream. You have a business maybe, or something that you know that you want to do, and you may have even started it. But then you hit a roadblock. And you're praying, you're diligent, you're being diligent, you're doing everything. You're tithing, you're coming to church, you're doing everything. But you still, it's like you know God is hearing you. But it's like he's just, the answer sounds just like so far away. And you just want to know, what is he saying? Can I make it a little louder, Lord? Can you make it a little clearer? Can you just turn up the volume so I can hear you? Well, I submit to you that if you pray with other tongues, the volume gets turned up. And then you get from where you are to where it is that you need to be. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> now, when you think about it, if we're in a relationship with our Heavenly Father and Jesus is our Lord and Savior making intercession for us, we most definitely want to hear loud and clear what they're guiding us, what they're telling us to do. We have read scripture that proves that the office of the Holy Spirit will do just that. We, however, have to be disciplined to utilize the gift provided for us by praying with other tongues. In doing so, our spirit can hear and receive understanding directly from the throne room of God. When the volume is turned up, making our next move is always easier because we've gained understanding. And with all you're getting, you're supposed to get what? Understanding. So let's look at Ephesians. We're going to look at the fifth chapter. And we're going to look at verses 15 through 20. This is Paul actually talking to the church at Ephesus. And this is where he's pretty much kind of commanding them that they need to be 
filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this particular, these verses, I'm going to read to you out of the Message Bible, because I think the translation here, it says it the best. And it says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Don't be carelessly unthinkingly. Don't live carelessly and unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. Huge droughts of him. Sing hymns instead of singing drinking songs. <laughs> Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our master, Jesus Christ. Let's face it. God created each of us for a purpose. I don't care what anyone has ever told you in your life that was negative or otherwise, you are valuable and you were created by the Most High God who is the giver of life for a specific reason. Hallelujah. He knows that your life is a process and he knows that he does, well, he doesn't ever expect perfection from us because after all, we can't be perfect, but he does appreciate progress. He's already provided all What's left out of all? Nothing, right? He's provided all that we need to bring it about, to accomplish the success of this life that he's given to us. We just have to be patient. We have to exercise our faith. We have to be diligent. We have to work hard at it until the promise is manifested. Seed, time, harvest. A lot of times we don't want to be bothered with the time, but it doesn't change. It is seed time and harvest. Now again, turning up the volume by praying in other tongues is essential in making this happen as easily as possible. Make sure that you're diligent. In business, think about it, especially sales. They tell you to develop a plan and work the plan until you realize your success. We seem to understand that, but when it comes to the things of God, we are just quick to grow weary. Now, maybe it's because since it's involving the kingdom, we expect instant results. That's fine, but you have to develop that. You are part of the process, so therefore, generally, time is needed. For example, when you're a baby Christian or when you're a Christian who's just starting to develop your prayer life, okay, because that could happen, you know, whenever, your belief system you're also starting to develop. So oftentimes when you pray, you're really merely hoping that your prayer is going to get answered. But after you're more mature, you know that God hears you and you expect an answer. There's a big difference. Now, as a sidebar, another reason that the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues is so beneficial is because you can be confident that when you pray, your prayer is being answered. Because why? The prayer is coming from the throne room through your spirit. So you already know you are praying what God would have you pray. Now, what I mean by this is turn with me. I'll prove it to Isaiah 55. And we're going to look at the 11th verse. And it says, so shall my word be, this is God speaking, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing an effect, any effect useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. It does not say in that verse of scripture that our word shall not return unto him void. Okay, but rather 
his word. That is why you should pray the word of God. Find the promises that you are standing on before you enter into the throne room on something. Okay. His word is what works. His word is what's not going to return unto him void. Now, when you're praying with other tongues, again, you are praying his word directly from the throne room. So you know when you're doing that, that's why they call it perfect prayer, you're covered. So I suggest to you, you know, all of this, you know, people, they say some of the prettiest prayers. I mean, they sound so wonderful and snots flying and they're crying. And, I mean, it sounds beautiful. And then when they're finished, they wonder why none of it gets answered. Because a lot of times, none of it contains anything that's in the word. It's just a bunch of flowery stuff that they thought sounded cute. So I don't want us, I'm sure none of you do that because you go Crenshaw, but don't do that. And if you catch yourself doing it, stop. Okay? And you know, sometimes, because this is the other thing I love about praying with other tongues, you don't have to think. I mean, seriously, you do not have to think. Because well, I, I live on Long Island. On Long, see, here it's different in the city because, you know, you guys can just hop trains and subways and get around. We have to have a car out there or we're just lost, okay? So I drive a lot when I'm at home. And I pray in the spirit while I'm driving. I can even pray in the spirit, drive, and have prayers music going on at the same time because I don't have to think. But my spirit man is interceding on my behalf. It's a wonderful thing. If I'm in the city, one of the things I love to do when I'm standing waiting for the subway is pray in the spirit because there's nothing else to do down there. I mean, I definitely don't want to start looking for the rats. So to me, it's just better for me to be productive. So I pray in the spirit. You can do that at any given point in time, but do it. Use it. It's something that's there to your advantage. Praise God. Now, another thing, since we already discussed the fact that we know we were all called here for a purpose. You would be surprised how many people have no clue what their purpose is. Now, I'm going to be honest, because again, I'm always my authentic self with you. I tell you all my business. There was a time I even answered an altar call at the church that I used to go to years ago, where they asked, if you don't know your purpose, and it was really something because the pastor got mad. <laughs> Because so many people went down there because, you know, we were this great church. We were supposed to know our purpose. I didn't know mine. And I was one of the people who went down there because I honestly did not know. What am I here for? You know, what am I supposed to do? So here's my answer to you. I then found this out later on. All you have to do is ask. If you truly, being your authentic self, don't know what you were called here to do, all you have to do is ask God, and I will prove it to you. Go with me to James, the first chapter, and we're going to look at the fifth verse. And it says, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone. How many people are in everyone? That's all of us, right? Liberally and ungrudgingly, and this I love, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to him. All you have to do is ask the Lord, why am I here? And he will clearly tell you. So whatever you're walking through at the moment, yield to the Holy Spirit and let God take your mess and turn it into a message. Amen. Now let us take a few minutes and explore some of the areas that you might want to have the volume turned up in your life. We've already discussed purpose. Obviously, we need to know what that is for because you don't want to be like I was. I use myself. You don't want to be like I was and be much older than you need to be, okay, to try to find out what your purpose is. I now know but oh my gosh, I think of how much time I wasted, how many businesses I started, and I couldn't figure out, well, some of them were successful and that was good, but I never really liked what I was doing, I just did it. I would have jobs, I'd be promoted in the jobs, that's nice, but I didn't really like that. You know, you make more money, that's good, but you're not satisfied, why is that? You know, all of these things, and I'm trying to figure out why. It's because I was not actually living out my purpose. 
What God called me to do, I would have never imagined in a million years, okay? But I didn't know until I asked. And I didn't ask until I prayed in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit prompted me and I found that scripture and I'm like, oh my goodness, all I had to really do was ask. So I really implore all of you, please do me that favor. Do yourself that favor and ask so that you know and you can have the volume turned up so you know what the next thing is for you to do. The other thing can be, Finances. Now, I will tell you, that's something that, of course, the enemy really likes to beat us over the head with because, of course, if he can do that, then we can't give more into the kingdom. And if we don't give more into the kingdom, the word doesn't get out, the gospel doesn't get out. You know, it's a, the, the process. You get it. Well, a lot of times, God will give you ideas and you don't always get it. Again, I'll use myself as an example. In 1982, I was not filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I didn't have the Holy Spirit guiding me at that time. But God still gave me a wonderful idea. He gave me the idea of doing customized gift baskets. Not the ones, not the fruit baskets. They've been around for a long time. But these were customized gift baskets where, uh, you know, an executive could call me up and say, I need a gift basket for thus and so. I want to spend about this amount. Put it together for me and send it to the recipient. He showed me clearly what I was supposed to do. And I just didn't do anything with that idea. Now you can find gift baskets everywhere. And I sit there and I'm like, boy, did you really miss that? But again, I didn't use the tool. Well, that's a whole nother story because I wasn't even born again at the time, but I didn't know it. That's another story we have to table. But the point is, for those of us who are born again, we have the tool that is available to us if we ask. And all we have to do is utilize that. So when he gives you ideas, you'll know exactly what to do and you can move forward with it. Now, family. Family is always interesting. And for anyone who tells me that they don't need to have the volume turned up with their family, you are super blessed. I, you know, I mean, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> but praise God, okay? Um, to me, I think that's an area that all of us could use assistance in. I mean, um, I have been married, it'll be 41 years in April, praise God. Um, I, <laughs> praise the Lord. We've been blessed with five beautiful children, and I'm going to tell you, the gift of the Holy Spirit has been very helpful. And it's been very helpful because it's taught me a lot of different things. One of the things, and I'll share this with the wives in the audience, okay? Wives, one of the greatest things that we can learn is the language of silence, okay? Sometimes we as women, because you know, we're more vocal, let's face it, we're wired differently. Praise God, we're wired differently. Okay, but we are more vocal and we have a tendency sometimes, we wanna get our point across and we have to let you know what we think and we're not gonna stop and we just go on and on and on and on. And I mean, think about it, the husbands might, after about a certain amount of time, we're fooling ourselves because they have shut us down anyway. They are not paying attention, okay? They really are not. So we might as well just be still, be quiet, learn the language of silence, okay? The other thing that I learned, and the Holy Spirit taught me this, God knows my husband. He created him. So if for some reason or another, because there will be times you're not always on the same page, I mean, let's face it. If you're not on the same page, ladies, rather than yapping, 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 nagging, 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 enter into the throne room. Go back to what we read in James 1.5. Ask for wisdom. God will show you things about your husband that it may have stemmed back from when he was three and four years old, before you ever even knew anything about him. He will give you wisdom so that you can do what? Be his help me and help him. But the other thing is, that you need to intercede for him as you would your best friend. You're not at odds with one another. You just may not be seeing eye to eye at that moment. We're never wrestling against flesh and blood. And you know that the enemy is always going to bring up different little things to try to create havoc. Okay, but we can control that. So if you pray with other tongues, not only will he give you wisdom, but he can show you, because I ask, Lord, help me. What am I, maybe I'm wrong on this issue. Show me how to fix it. What do I need to do? First, check yourself. Because when you have one finger pointing at him or somebody else, look at these three. They're pointing right back at you. So you need to check yourself first. Then, 
Again, intercede for him. And if he's missing it, ask the Lord to show him. You don't have to. And you come out smelling like a rose because you didn't have to yap, yap, yap. You didn't nag him. The Lord did it for you. It is far better that way. Okay, far better that way. And I mean, it works for me. So I highly suggest that. Now, husbands, you're not going to get off so easily. Because what you have to learn to do is cherish your wives. Okay? Literally cherish them. Appreciate them. And listen to them. You need to listen to them on for a myriad of things. But if you do listen to them, you will find that it helps you in a lot of ways. That's why we're the help me. Because we're wired where we have intuition. We can help you with business. We can help you with finances. We can help you with a lot of things. You just have to allow us to have a voice and listen to us. And then you can also learn how to really treat your wife well sometimes when you listen. One of the greatest gifts that my husband has given me, and my husband has blessed me with a lot of gifts, I have to tell you. He really, really has. But one that I will always treasure is in 1984, that's when I was actually born again. And I got all excited, of course. But the thing was, I always liked butterflies ever since I was a little girl. And I was so excited to realize that, wow, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's symbolized by the butterfly. I just thought that was just amazing. Then at that same time, in that same year, I learned why they usually give bands of gold for wedding bands. Because, you know, I just wanted the bling. You know, just give me all the diamonds. I never really thought about what does it mean, whatever. But then I realized that they usually give the band of gold because there's no ending. It's all, there's no ending, no beginning. It just keeps going. And I was having a conversation in the car with my husband, just saying how I was just so blessed to get that information. And I said, just think about it. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus surrounded and embraced with the never-ending love of God. Now, that was a little simple statement, right? The man listened. That Christmas, he presented me with a pendant that he had made of a butterfly, and around the butterfly is a circle of gold. Are you kidding me? That gift, I absolutely love. <laughs> and, but the thing is, he listened to me. It was a quick conversation. I wasn't nagging him and asking him to listen, but he did. So men, I submit to you, listen to your wives. You will be amazed because he was, it, it worked out very, very well. We both were very happy with that gift, okay? So enough said on that. You can figure it out. <laughs> okay. Now, when it comes to children, that's another very interesting topic to me. Because children, they don't come with any kind of instruction manual. And my heart really goes out to parents who are rearing children now because the school system is different than it used to be. And they are putting labels on these kids like Skittles. I mean, they have more initials for stuff that's wrong. I can't even keep up with it, you know, and I don't want to keep up with it. And what I suggest to you, and I sincerely mean this with all my heart, you need to utilize the gift of the Holy Spirit when it comes to rearing your children, okay? Don't go by, meaning yes, we have to take them to the doctors, we take them and we listen to what the teachers say, you know, we're not disrespectful, but that's not whose reports you believe. You believe the report of the Lord. You get the instruction from the throne room of God when it comes to your child. Now, my eldest daughter is gonna get her doctorate on May 7th of this year. She's 37 years old, okay? Now, you know her, she's the one that plays the flute when she comes. Okay, well, one of the challenges with her was this child, when it came to math, it didn't seem to add up with her. I mean, we could do whatever. We could put two plus two, count, one, two, three, four. She'd say six, okay, or she'd say five or three. Or what? We're like, okay. And I just couldn't figure out, Lord, what in the world? And, and this was something we struggled with with her for many, many years. Well, then New York State passed this law that you had to have a Regents diploma. It used to be before it was voluntary, but then it got to a point when she was in school, you had to have it or you didn't graduate. I'm like, oh boy. So the forecast, like the forecast for the weather, the forecast from her teachers were, I don't know what y'all are gonna do. Houston, you got a problem, okay? Cause she's not gonna pass this math Regents. What are you going to do? So I did what I always do. I prayed in the Holy Spirit. I asked for wisdom. What do I do regarding this father? He told me, when she goes to sleep, 
Now, this may sound crazy, didn't matter. I do what I'm told. <laughs> she would go to sleep at night. I would go downstairs, sit quietly in her room, and pray in the spirit. That's all I did. Well, she didn't get 100 on the Regents, but she got a 99. <laughs> So again, I submit to you, listen, pray in the spirit. He'll give you answers on anything and everything. So much so, like there might be some of you who are involved in some form of litigation, or you may be involved with something that's a big, I don't know, you've got to go before a board, whether it's in school or, you know, at business, and you're concerned, what do I say? What do I do? Turn with me to Luke's gospel. And we're going to look at Luke 12, and we're going to read the 12th verse. I'm going to read it to you out of the Message Bible. And it says, when they drag you into their meeting places or into police courts and before judges, don't worry about defending yourselves, what you'll say or how you'll say it. The right words will be there. The Holy Spirit will give you the right words when the time comes. Now, I can be a living witness of that as well. I didn't even know that scripture existed, but years ago, back, oh my goodness, it was in the 80s, we had bought a business. We got into a litigation issue with the person we bought the business from, and basically what that person was trying to do was kick us out of our house, take everything we had. I mean, it was a disaster. It was horrible in the natural. And we hired attorneys, and we're sitting there, and we're going through, you know, all the preliminary steps and, you know, the depositions and all the rest. And I'm sitting there, and I did the same thing I'm telling you to do. I needed the volume turned up and I needed it turned up soon because I wasn't going to be kicked out of my house and I needed to know what to do. And I knew it was but God that was going to work this out for me. Well, God told me to do something radical. I went in, told the, the lawyers to take a walk. I just want to sit here with the person that we're dealing with. And I opened up my mouth. And the Holy Spirit gave me the words to speak. We ended the situation on that day, and we ended it at a fraction of what it was going to cost us before. So I'm telling you, I know that this gift works. This is not something I'm telling you like it's a little fairy tale because I think it's cute. I'm telling you, I know that it works. It works with everything. If you're believing God for salvation for your family members, just go ahead and pray with other tongues. Because you know what? You could be watering because it's seed, time, harvest. There's some time where we're just watering. But if we're believing God for them, guess what? It works. All five of my children are born again and spirit-filled and love the Lord. I know that this works. I'm not just telling you this, okay? The other thing is if we want to operate in excellence in everything that we do, it could be something as simplistic as, they ask you to type out something at work, a memo, and it can't all fit on one page. You have one little line that's on the second page. How silly is that? Adjust it, make it 90% instead of 100% so you can get it all on one page and it looks professional. That's operating in excellence. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you if you don't know how. I remember when we first got our first computer in 1996, they, first of all, they told me this little mouse moved things around. That was the wrong name to give this thing. That's what I mean from me. Mouse already, I wasn't feeling that, okay? Then they were like, you moved this little cursor around, and this happened. And all I could think of, I was actually, I perspired. I kept thinking, oh my gosh, it's just going to blow up on me or something. I didn't know because I was ignorant of how to use the tool of the computer. So now, of course, I, wherever I go, I have to have a computer. I have the iPhone, the iPad, everything. So, I mean, I get it. But I'm just saying, this is what happens sometimes to people when it comes to utilizing the gift of the Holy Spirit. The other thing I just want to share with you, and I'm probably going to run over about two minutes. Do you mind? Okay, praise God. Thank you. Okay. Um, a lot of churches, because sometimes people get a real bad feeling when it comes to praying with other tongues. Now, I came from a Baptist church. And we only have one person there who prayed in other tongues. I won't say her name because, you know, that's not nice. But anyway, she was an evangelist. And first of all, I was, start, I was like a child. I was like 9, 10, 11 years old. And she always came and she had this thing draped on her head. And she just kind of looked a little like, 
different, okay? But she was the only one who prayed with other tongues. But what I could never understand is whenever she did it, she'd start and then she'd fall out on the floor and she'd start rolling around. But that didn't even, that wasn't it. The stuff coming out of her mouth, this foaming white stuff. So I had a real fear. I know we're not supposed to have a fear, but I had a fear when it came to speaking with other tongues. I didn't want any part of it, okay? And when I saw her as a little kid, you should see me, I would run around the other side of the church because I just didn't know what was wrong with her. A lot of people have some real strange feelings when it comes to speaking with other tongues. They think it's spooky. They think something comes over you and it takes over and, you know, all of this foolishness. It is no different than, let's see, how many of you, when you came here this morning, you, well, I'm trying to think of something everybody uses. Everybody has, knows about a shower. Now, years ago, years ago, <laughs> you used to have to wash up in a wash tub because they didn't even have bathtubs, okay? The fact that I remember that, I'm a little older. Okay, so that's how you had to wash up. Then we got all excited when they had big bathtubs and you could really soak and take a bath. Well, then it was really wonderful when they had showers because you could quickly just get in a shower. So we have evolved with different things. So I submit to you that if you were born again, that's a wonderful thing. That's fantastic, okay? Because you are still going to go and be with the Lord. That's wonderful. But if you want to make this part of your journey easier, if you want to be able to tap into the source of the Most High God, turn up the volume in your life to know what it is that you need to do, then I submit to you, please accept this gift. It's free. It's easy. You just ask for it. Now, you may say to me, Iva, what is the big deal? Why are you pushing this? Why do you care so much? Let's just look at these two verses of scripture, and then I'm going to tell you really quick. Verse Ephesians 6 and we're going to look at verse 18. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Then flip real quickly, and this will be the last scripture, to Psalm 25. And we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. I'm going to read this to you out of the Living Bible, because this translation says it the best. Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence him. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promises. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord for help, for he alone can rescue me. Now, why it's so important to me personally for each and every person under the sound of my voice to utilize the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues is because I can tell you the difference that it made in my life. I was a person who was married at a young age. I had five children, as you've heard, but it wasn't not always an easy thing. I mean, when I was actually born again, I had three children. I thought I was born again. That is a whole nother story. Can't take up the time for that now. But the point was, I still had these children and we were making it. I mean, I can't tell you that I had this horror story where I was living in my car or out on the street or anything. And I praise God for that. But I can tell you it was difficult. It was challenging. We didn't have a whole lot of extra anything. Okay. And we were doing the best that we knew how to do. We knew that we loved God. But when I got a hold of this gift, it made all of the difference for me because you see, I wasn't one too proud to accept the gift. I wanted all that God had for me. And when I received this gift, I was able to leave corporate America and come home and rear my own children. I was able to get five children while I was at home rearing them to go into college and be able to make it through. All of this, trusting God, using this gift. Yes, there were some things I needed a whole lot of information on, a whole lot of understanding that I didn't have. I didn't go to college, okay? But I wanted better for my children. I wanted my children to go to college. And I didn't want them just going to some little rinky-dink college. I wanted them going to wherever they wanted to go. And I believed God for it. And he 
honored it. I remember sitting in my living room, praying with other tongues when I had my baby girl because I always wanted her to go to the Montessori school because I went to a school that was similar to Montessori. And I thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. So I wanted this for her. And I was like, Lord, how in the world are we going to, number one, find one out where we live? Number two, where are we going to even be able to afford it? All of these things. But I didn't care. I trusted him. I prayed in the spirit. I believed God for it. And do you know what? She went to Montessori school. They opened up a school. Are you kidding me? And then my husband had a business connection. We didn't even, he did work. We didn't even have to pay cash for her to go there. I'm like, God will do whatever it is. He will direct your path. He will turn up the volume for you in any area of your life. You just have to ask and utilize it. Don't let it sit. There are a lot of people who come through counseling. They receive this gift. Oh, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. And then they go home and just put it up on a shelf somewhere. And then they don't understand why life has to be so difficult. Well, I can stand before you and tell you what this gift has done for me. I get up every morning. And I now understand and know what my purpose is. I now understand what it means to mount up with wings as eagles and to be able to run and not get weary and walk and faint not. I know what it means because of this gift. If I have a challenge, all I have to do is stop and pray and ask the Lord to help me. And I am in control of the gift. It is not something that overtakes me. I use it the way I choose to use it. And it is a blessing. So please, if you do nothing else, hear me today. Hear what it is that I'm saying. I really hope so. Hopefully, after this little brief study regarding the gift of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, you will have a better appreciation for the valuable gift I trust that as you utilize this precious gift, that you recognize how the volume has been turned up in your life and you can readily follow what God would have you do in every area. For those of us who are born again and spirit filled, the greater one indwells us. His Holy Spirit permeates us and the potential that lies within us is nothing short of greatness. Thanks for joining us. Our hope is that you received something that you can apply to your life and strengthen your faith. At Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, we believe that the Word of God is practical for everyday application. If you'd like to support the ministry with your tithe and offering, you can mail them to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. We now offer the convenience of text and online giving, one of the most secure ways to give. Try it now. Simply text East G from your smartphone to 28950 and follow the prompts. You can even specify a designation for your gift. Text East G for general donation, East T for tithe, or East O for offering. Each transaction needs to be its own individual text message. You can also visit our website, FrenchRChristianCenterEast.org, and click the Give tab to begin your experience. Set up recurring donations or give one-time gifts. This experience is easy to use, secure, and requires a one-time registration only. Giving the second time is even easier. Simply text EASTG to 28950 with all your information securely stored. We appreciate your continued support and stand in agreement with you for the manifold return in your life. Thanks again for watching. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight.